This is the HLC2 series high speed, high precision laser displacement sensor from Panasonic. The HLC2 series combines a high density linear image sensor, a high resolution lens, and a high speed processor for demanding measurement applications. The system layout is made up of two components, the controller that can accept two laser heads, analog current and voltage outputs, various digital I.O. serial output as well as options for Ethernet output. There are currently over 30 sensor heads with sensing distances up to 550 millimeters with shorter ranges that have a resolution as good as 0.01 micron. There are small beam types for small object detection, large beam spot for detecting parts with uneven surfaces, as well as specular modes for transparent object measurements. In this video we're going to review the HL-C208B that has a range of 65 to 105 millimeters and a 0.1 millimeter beam spot. I thought it would be interesting to put a demo together that incorporated 3D printed parts. I also wanted to take the real world I.O. out of the controller and connect to uh, programmable multicolor lights and push buttons. So I went with the uh, Banner Engineering S22 series. I'm going to put a link in the description if you'd like to learn more about these uh, really awesome devices. The laser controller connects the laser head here and there are extension cables as long as 30 meters which is about 100 feet that are available. The controller has a USB and serial output along with a serial connection that you could take to a dedicated programmable display and that uh, optional display can be used for displaying waveform data, function setting, and showing measurement data. The first thing we need to do after powering up is connect the laser controller to the PC software and set the sensor up. The software is free to download and use. Just get in touch with us and we can provide the download links. The software is mostly intuitive and the laser parameters are set up in a menu tab format style. In the upper right the software will display the controller type, the firmware version, laser that it is connected to, and you can have up to 16 memory channels programmed and you select the channel here. The first thing I want to do is load what is already stored in the controller by pressing the load button. We have the laser connected to head A so let's look at that tab. Installation mode can be set for diffuse or specular. Alarm delay times. This is good if you have moving objects that have holes or other surface imperfections that you don't want those to affect the measurement data. The higher the number, the longer the sensor will keep the last known good value before the alarm is activated. The measurement mode. It allows you to set for the optimum measurement algorithm for the type of material that you're trying to measure. You can see there's quite a few options here. For now, we'll just leave this in diffuse mode. Measurement surface reference. This is for setting which surface reflection that you want to measure. It's generally used for clear objects, especially clear on top of clear, when the sensor's image sensor will see multiple peaks of reflection from the various surfaces. Peak recognition sensitivity. This function sets the peak of the received light waveform. If the target is causing the waveform instability, the peak range can be adjusted from 100 to 400 to find the optimum level. Median filter is used to cut off sudden changes or spikes in measurement value. The laser light adjustment is generally this is set to auto and the laser intensity automatically adjusts based on the surface material to keep a uniform reflection light amount, but it can be adjusted. The calibration, this function corrects the deviation of the measurement value caused from the color material or surface condition of the measurement object. The measurement range is used mainly for transparent object thickness when there are multiple reflection peaks. The other tab we will look at is OUT1. Output selection is for selecting which value you want to output out of the controller. 
So for example, if you had two laser heads and you wanted to output thickness, you could just select uh, this uh, algorithm right here. A very important thing to look at is the analog scaling. This is where you set the measurement range for analog. So for example, the top would be the measurement range for the 20 milliamp output, and the bottom would be the measurement range for the 4 milliamp output. You press here to set up the scaling. This section, Analog Output at Alarm, allows you to tell the sensor what to output under alarm condition. So for example, if you're looking at a part with small holes and you want to ignore them, you would just select Hold Previous Value, and that will allow the sensor to just keep the last known good value until the hole passes by and the sensor can read the part again. Or you could set the alarm so that it clamps to a specific analog level, say 24 milliamps as an example. The other area we will look at is the judgment output. I have set the digital output so that the sensor will output a low, go, and high for the three test parts I printed. This button shows the received waveform data and great for troubleshooting and figuring out how different material reflects light, especially transparent material, when you are trying to get to see the varying surface reflections from a glass part. The measure value shows the current measured value out to five decimal places. This reads out in millimeters. It also shows the alarm status and the digital output status. You can also set up a zero set reset. Of course, you can also capture data and record that to an Excel type file. Okay, I think we're all set up. Let's go back to the demo.